So it's actually looking like The Rock's upcoming DC comic book tentpole, Black Adam, might actually have a good opening weekend. Now, for a while, projections were looking pretty bad for this movie. Some people were saying like $50 million. And its long-term haul would be like $125 million, which is disastrous, especially for a movie like this. This is a big budget tent pole movie, which the box office desperately needs right now because we are looking at a historically bad box office. So this movie doing good would do would do all right for the for the theater chains. I'm really indifferent to this movie. I'm probably going to go see it. The second trailer for this looked really good. I actually thought it was going to open like last week, but I guess the actual release date is the 13th, though I believe the world premiere was the third. I forget which country, so it's already out in some areas, I guess, which means spoiler alert. If that Superman rumor is true or not, we're going to find out before it even comes out domestically, though maybe that's intentional. Yeah, if you didn't know, there's a big rumor that Henry Cavill returns triumphantly at the end of this movie. He's not in it very long, but it sets up a sequel where they fight, which I think would actually be a pretty cool movie, considering Superman's weakness to magic. If you could pull it off, that would be a pretty sweet movie. But how is this movie? It actually looks pretty action-packed. I liked the second trailer you had a lot of really obscure DC comic book characters showing up to fight him, which was pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm not excited for it, but I think I am going to go see it. I haven't been to the theaters in a while, and it looked okay enough to go catch it on a Thursday early. So we'll see. I still think 70 to 75 million is rather weak considering how long it's been since we've had a movie like this in theaters. It's been a minute. It's been a few weeks. So you would think maybe people would be pretty excited to go see a movie like this. And to be fair, it could come out and absolutely just dominate. I I don't know. A new line Warner Brothers release is pacing to debut anywhere between the 70 to 75 million mark in its domestic debut over the October 21st through 23rd weekend, if not higher. Sources with access to tracking say the surveys show that Black Adam is similar in strength to Sony's origin movie Venom, which opened to 80 million in early October 2018. If tracking and box office analysts are being more conservative in suggesting an opening shy of Venom for Black Adam, it's because the box office is still in pandemic recovery mode, which I hate that. It's obviously not. That's such a that's that's such a BS thing to say now because of the fact that, let's be honest, we've had two of the biggest movies of all time recently, Spider-Man and Top Gun. Those movies have shattered records. How can they how can the box office still be in recovery mode if we've had two of the biggest movies of all time? Maybe what you've been putting out in the box office has been absolute dog shit. And that's why a lot of movies have underperformed because most of them are absolute trash and nobody wants to go see them. I just find it funny that we're still using this, this recovery mode BS. That's not what we're in. We're not in recovery mode. So. This is a better opening than what they were saying. Remember, it was around fifty million. I did a video on it saying that this would be disastrous. So, uh, it's it's tough to say. Like I said before, if this will do good or if it'll do bad, I don't know. But let's talk about some more comic book <laughs> comic book news. Apparently, comic book creator Joe Glass, an independent comic book creator, very very anti CG. Ripaverse does not like any of us. Uh, went on a huge campaign to try to take down the channel called Diversity in Comics, which renamed itself to Ya Boy Zach. Uh, he was really big on trying to take that channel down. Did a lot of did a lot of ops and discords and backroom channels to try to strike it down. They almost succeeded once, actually. 
I remember that channel had two strikes at one time. That's because of him and another comic book creator named Mags Visaggio. Uh, these two are very problematic in the comic book industry, and one of the reasons that I that I like to use them as examples of the bottom up industry is because those creators, like Joe Glass here, really have nothing big under their name. They they have no real big titles. They don't. Joe especially does not work for DC or Marvel, though he has begged for jobs at them before. He has begged for work there. Uh, he doesn't get it. So what him and a lot of other small creators do is they team up and they will smear and try to ruin big-name people. That way they think they're going to be able to kind of work their way into those positions and it doesn't work. But because of social media and how these people coordinate, uh, they're very, very successful in making people kind of listen to them and, and kiss their ass. This is why a lot of us refer to comic, the comic book industry as a bottom-up industry because the people at the bottom have more power than the people at the top, and that's because they all listen to them. They all use virtuous shields and stuff like that. So this guy is not a good person. I've seen him do a lot of just awful things, and now he messed up with this. So this Wales Women's Rights Conference is going to, I guess, be – near where this guy lives, I guess. And they don't like them. They're calling it a turf conference. Even though this this uh, conference, from what I understand, is hosting a lot of the Iranian women that are going to be attending it that are protesting right now that they have to wear hijabs and you know that they can't drive. They, women have it really bad over there, which is funny because all of these hardcore feminists that protest anime boobies uh, are very silent on stuff like this. They don't ever really talk about it. They're very quiet about it, uh, just showing that they're fake people. But it's going there, and he thought it would be funny to talk about burning down the hotel that the conference would be staying in, and a lot of people on Twitter were very, very upset by that and went after the two people that were saying it. Oh, just learned there's a turf conference coming to Cardiff this month. What the absolute F? Is it in a building that would be a loss if it got burned down? Said, not sure yet. It's now it's not been confirmed which hotel it's hosting at. Uh, so a lot of people went after this guy on Twitter, uh, calling him out rightfully because that's nasty behavior. And the guy had to lock down his account, but he's apologized now. Take this down. I've apologized and I'm ready to put it behind me. <laughs> Oh, you get to decide when this controversy is going to go over, huh? It's just, what's funny about this. Um, it's a really good example. So he's been playing victim for like two days now, playing complete victim, and there was an appropriate there was an appropriate term I saw used for the behavior called dictum. Uh, when you're a dick online, and people decide to call you out for it, you become a victim which is what happened in Joe Glass's case. Every time he gets called out for bad behavior, he becomes a, a victim. But it's just funny. I've never seen a comic book creator get dragged by this. This person is contacting the South Wales police force. <laughs> Say, listen, you need to take a look at this. And it's a legitimate thing. Like, they're talking about burning down your hotel here. So, anyway, comic book, uh, comic book industry is still quite the mess. And uh, I wonder if this is finally carrying over to the movies as we're seeing a big, big tenfold get a week, week, week opening weekend. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed to that notification bell. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.